Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you could see it and you could purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. Launched in 2007 alongside its 5015 Time Diver counterpart, this is the Blancpain 50 Fathoms Flyback Chronograph Reference 5085F, a lovely 45 millimeters in hand polished stainless steel with a lovely sapphire capped bezel and a flyback chronograph function. This is a true diving chronograph from a company famous for making haute de gamme dive watches. This is a worthy rival to any Royal Oak offshore and in many respects a superior choice. Now the timepiece on my wrist is large, no doubt, my wrist 16 centimeters circumference and you can see that the 45 millimeter case more or less dominates my forearm it's not a thin watch at 15.8 millimeters thick when you shove a soft iron anti-magnetic cage and an automatic flyback chronograph into a 300 meter diver it's going to be a little bit of a chunk but it is inoffensive from lug to lug as it has a shockingly compact spacing of 50.3 millimeters from lug to lug across the wrist so I can actually recommend this watch for wrists as small as 15 centimeters maybe even 14 and a half centimeters circumference the spacing between the lugs was prescient back in 2007 23 millimeters meaning the spacing and the stance look and feel planted and still seem contemporary from the vantage point of 2019. One of the chief features of the modern 50 Fathoms has been its use of distinctive and tough sailcloth straps. You can see a little bit of bolstering, a folded edge, a monotone stitch, and the textile material is remarkably resistant to scratches, scuffs, tears, any wear of any kind, but it can be a little bit coarse and abrasive. So Blancpain coats the underside of the strap with a vulcanized rubber that is supple and strategically keeps you comfortable while isolating the fibers from the wrist oils, grit, moisture, and sweat that could otherwise degrade it. There is a simple polished stainless steel pin buckle, and then there are corresponding polished facets on the case where the lugs have been smartly broken out from the case band to break up the mass of metal and you can see that this is a hand finished case because of that sharp break between lug and case band. The case band also slopes away a little bit from its top so where it contacts the wrist it's a bit narrower than at its bezel causing it to wear more easily on a small wrist. You can see that the crown, a screw down unit, is almost comically oversized but that is for superb ergonomic purpose as it's an easy crown to grip and it is one that is an absolute pleasure to manipulate as it's anchored resolutely in place even when withdrawn. Some burly sports watches feature wobbly crowns. I hate that. Not a problem here. The shouldered chronograph pushers, and they are shouldered, not screw down, are available to actuate full time. So you see how I'm able to stop the chronograph and restart? They're not actual screw down pushers. They don't compromise the water resistance in any way, still 300 meters, but unlike, for example, a Rolex Daytona, you don't have to screw them out when on the spur of the moment you need to use the chronograph. Now you also have a flyback function so you can reset and restart with no need to first stop. It's great if you're timing events that occur in rapid succession. Appreciate that the dial features both a, a gloss finish at its center and a satin finish under its hour track. And I do appreciate also that white gold is used for the hands as well as the indices. Plenty of loom on this dial and plenty of loom on this bezel. A unidirectional rotating dive style bezel. You can see that not only is there a sapphire, other watches, previous IWC Aquatimers, for example, Zin Time Pieces, and Bremont Supermarines have featured sapphire capped bezels. A bit more expensive, sure, but not as expensive as the cambered sapphire that has always been the signature of the modern 50 Fathoms since it was revived in 1998. That camber is not cheap to achieve, and it creates the appearance of an almost dewdrop bright bezel that is also fully loomed because the sapphire caps and protects the loom of the bezel. So it is a sensation circular supernova at night and you'll see that in the loom shot. Let's hear the bezel. It's chunky, it's vocal, but it definitely has a different feel to it. A bit more refined and a bit more blunted so it doesn't have the raw mechanical ratchet of plebeian dive watches, if you will. This is a timepiece that's designed to look and feel refined in every respect. Now inside the case, and you will note on the case back, declaring this an anti-magnetic watch, there is a soft iron inner cage, a la Rolex Milgauss, to channel magnetic field lines around the movement. The watch featuring a caliber F 
185. It's based on the Frédéric Piguet 1185 that's powered many Vacheron, Breguet, Audemars Piguet, and of course Blancpain chronographs over the years. It is a high horology automatic with a unidirectional winding action for efficiency, 40 hour power reserve, a quick set date though not hacking. It beats away at 21,600 vibrations per hour. It has the flyback functionality. It also has a vertical clutch and column wheel system. So you can see with the vertical clutch, there's never any stagger or jump to the seconds hand when you start it. And if you wish, because of the vertical clutch, you can leave the chronograph engaged full time with no hazard to the watch. The column wheel, ensures that the feeling is crisp. It's the more expensive and traditional way to make a chronograph. This is a timepiece that puts it all together. Handsome, exclusive, refined, and historically significant. This is the Blancpain 50 Fathoms Flyback Chronograph. 50 Fathoms Chronograph. Ooh, one more detail. Movement adjusted in five positions.